How many know there's nobody like Jesus? Amen. There's nobody like Jesus. Amen. If you have your Bibles, Job chapter 23, beginning with verse number 8. Job chapter 23, verse 8. When you find it, you can say amen. this morning. Amen. I am nothing on my own or of my own ability, but I know that God is able to do anything. Anybody else believe that with me, that God is able to do anything? Hallelujah. Job 23, beginning with verse 8. Behold, I go forward, but it is not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. Would you lay your Bibles down? Let's lift our hands together all across the house of the Lord right now. Lord Jesus, God, I come before you right now. God, I ask you, Lord, that you empty me of myself. Empty me of my own ideas and opinions, God. Lord, I pray that you fill me with your holy anointing, God. I admit my dependence upon you, God. I pray that you anoint every ear to hear your word today, God. Lord, we're here on purpose, God, Lord, to see you move and to work and to have your way, God. There is nothing that you cannot do, God. I pray that the anointing would destroy every yoke of bondage, that it would bind up the brokenhearted and set their captive soul free, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Come on, somebody clap your hands. Shout in Jesus' name. Yes, he is worthy of all of our praise. Amen. Hallelujah. And you may be seated. Amen. I just want to preach to you what God has laid upon my heart uh, for this service this morning. It's just simply this. Even when it's dark, God is still moving. Amen. Even when it's dark, God is still moving. Amen. In the very opening of the book of Job, God lets us know that Job was a perfect and a righteous man. Uh, the word of God lets us know that he was faithful to God and that there was nothing that he had to worry about. He was, he was wealthy. He had everything at his fingertips because God had been good to him. Yeah. But it was not a one-sided relationship. Uh, Job was not one of those that was just give me, give me, but he was one that gave to the Lord. He was one that dedicated his life to God. Uh, he was a man that was so faithful that he offered sacrifice uh, for his children continually. Uh, he was not a hit and miss person uh, like we see a lot nowadays, but he was a man that was steadfast. Uh, he was a man that was faithful. Uh, and because of his faithfulness, God was good to him. Uh, and God protected him. And God put a head or a wall around him that protected his life uh, and protected his substance and yeah. everything uh, that God had blessed him with. Uh, well, I'm not talking to you this morning about a man uh, that was just halfway in, but I'm preaching to you this morning about a man that had a made up mind uh, that yeah. I will serve the Lord. Uh, I'm talking to you about a man that said, hey, it does not matter uh, what's going on around me. Uh, I will offer unto the Lord what is due under him and in this day and age that we're living in we need some men and women that'll make up their mind no matter what anybody else is doing I will serve the Lord I will magnify his name I will exalt him for he is worthy to be praised hallelujah and in heaven uh, there was a conversation that took place uh, between Job and Satan. 
And and Joe and Satan uh, between God and Satan rather and and Satan told God I can't do anything to Job because you put a wall of protection around him. But if you'll just let me attack him, if you'll just let me take everything that he has, I know he'll curse you uh, to your face. He's not serving you because he loves you, uh, but he's serving you because you've blessed him uh, oh. and because you've been good to him. Uh, but God had enough confidence into his servant uh, that he said it does not matter if you take everything he has uh, I'm willing to tell you that he will still worship uh, and he will still bring glory uh, to my name uh, God had confidence in his servant uh, we're not serving a God uh, that looks down on us uh, in distaste but we serve a God uh, that loves it when he sees somebody uh, that is steadfast uh, and somebody that is faithful uh, and somebody that has a made of mine. And so, without going real deep into the story, you know that within a moment's time, just one after the other, the things that he possessed destroyed and killed, and he And here Satan has set the stage for Job to curse God. Satan has given is not good and that God is not faithful. But here we find a man that instead of complaining and instead of throwing up his hands and quitting, we find a man that said, hey, I know that God is good. And in Job 1 and 20 and verse 21 it says, then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down and worshipped and said, naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm telling you about a man that said it does not matter what's going on. It was the Lord that blessed me and it was the Lord that decided to take it away. I'm going to tell you Satan has tried to give you a place to quit. He's trying to give you a place to give up. But I wonder how many people will be like Job and say I'm making up my mind to worship I'm a worshiper. I'm not a quitter. I'm not going to give up just because it's not looking good. But Joseph, God is my source. He's the one that blesses me. And whatever he decides, I'm going to trust him. I'm going to fall down and worship and say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, somebody shout unto God with a voice of trust. Can I preach real to you this morning? Yes, yes. Amen. The verse that I just read, the passage in Job 1 and 20 and 21. When we preach and talk about Job, we love to say that. And we also love to quote over in Job 13, where he said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. We love to talk about all the positive things that Job said and done. But Satan goes back before the Lord and he tells him, if you'll touch his body, I know then he'll curse you. And God gives Satan permission to attack his body and covers him with balls from the top of his head to the sole of his foot. Yeah. And now Job is sitting down in the ashes and he's scraping his sores with a piece of broken pottery. And his, even his wife comes up and tells him, God, uh, Job, why don't you just curse God and die? And then his friends come and they are so amazed and astonished at how Job looks. It's, they couldn't even hardly recognize him, the, the pain and the, the torment that he's facing, that he's going through. Uh, here he is 
because he, he's, he's covered and he's, he's, he's hurting and he's dealing with all these things in his mind. And they sat there and they stared at him for seven days and seven nights. And after all of this, there was something in Job's mind that in chapter 3 of Job, I'm not going to read the chapter to you, but, but throughout the entire chapter, Job is cursing the day that he was born. And he even says, I, I, I wish that I would have been carried straight from the womb to the grave. He says, it would have even been better if I had not even been born. He is on this roller coaster of emotions uh, in his mind, his thoughts, the way he's feeling, uh, the way everything's looking around him. Uh, it it, it, it don't, doesn't look good. It's dark. Uh, he, he doesn't know what God has been saying about him. Uh, he doesn't know the conversation uh, that Satan has had with God. Uh, he does not realize the confidence that God has put in him. Uh, but here he is left in the dark, uh, wondering what in the world is going on in my life and I believe that depression had pressed him down and weighed him down in his mind but somehow Job managed to hold on and somehow Job managed to keep a grip on life somewhere down deep Job grabbed a hold of something that allowed him to hold on no matter what was going on in his life Come on. and in Job 23 we turn our attention there again in the eighth and the ninth verse that we started with and said, Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand where he doth work, Job said, I know he's working for other people. I know he's moving. I know he's still doing things, but I cannot behold him. He hides himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. Yeah. But this 10th verse says, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. There was no doubt in Job's mind that and through this whole ordeal God knows where I am and even when it doesn't look like it God is still moving I'm telling you even when it's dark God is still working on your children even when it's dark God is still working on your spouses even when it's dark God is still reaching for that particle son or that particle daughter even when it looks like the whole world is upside down I'm going to tell you about a God that's not afraid to move and work in a bad situation. Job said, wherever I look, I don't see God. But this one thing I know, that he knows exactly where I am. And when he's tried me, I'm going to come forward like pure gold. I'm going to tell you, Satan wants to kill you in the darkness. But if he knows if you ever come out of the fire, you're going to shine. can steer us in the wrong direction sometimes. Our emotions can lead us to think things that are not true. But Job had enough faith that told him, hey, I've been faithful to God. I've given of my time. I've given of my sacrifice to the Lord. And I know that God's going to be faithful to me. It does not matter how I feel right now. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, for 
when we walk by faith and not by sight. That lets me know, hey, I don't have to worry about what I'm seeing because I can look beyond that. And God's got a bigger picture. God's got more going on than what I can see. Because even when my eyes are closed at night, God's making a way. Hey, Lord, I'm sitting in darkness. I know that God's moving. I know that he's working. I know that he's healing. I know that he's making a way. Psalms 30 and 5 says, For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. I've come to encourage somebody in the Holy Ghost this morning that God has not forgotten about you. But weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. I've come to give somebody some good news that God knows exactly where you are. And although you cannot feel him, although you do not understand, God is moving in your life. God is moving in your situations. God is moving in your circumstances. God is moving in this church. God is moving in this community. How can I tell somebody? Can't nobody do me like Jesus. It doesn't matter how I feel. This one thing I know. Even when it's dark, God is moving. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 3 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Yeah. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Somebody say it was dark. It was dark. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Before God ever spoke the words, let there be light. The word of God tells us that there was darkness. And that the spirit of the Lord moved in that darkness. Would you lift your hands with me right now all across this house right now? Hallelujah. There was nothing but emptiness and void and darkness and chaos. But the Spirit of the Lord was moving in that darkness. And as the Spirit of the Lord moved, then the Spirit of the Lord spoke and said, let there be light. And I want to tell somebody in the house of the Lord this morning that no matter how empty, no matter how void, no matter how chaotic your life seems right now, that does not mean that God is not moving in your life. But God is working and God is moving. Before God ever spoke a word, he already had a plan. He already had a vision as to what he was going to make out of that emptiness and as to what he was going to make out of that chaos and then he spoke let there be light and there was light I've come to tell you right now it's not always going to be the way it is right now but even while you're waiting I want you to know that God is moving and that God is working in your life Micah chapter 7 verse 8 says rejoice not against me oh my enemy when I fall I shall arise when I sit in darkness the Lord shall be a light unto me I've come to tell somebody that it does not matter if you feel fallen if you feel broken if you feel chaotic if you feel confused all that matters is that Michael said hey it does not matter if I'm in darkness even when I'm dead God will be a light unto me I've come to my God that walks in the darkness I've got a God that talks in the darkness my wife will make her way to the music I want to lift our hands and lift our voice together all across the house would you do that with me God I love you God I praise you Jesus I've come to encourage somebody this morning that even when it's dark, 
John is still moving. Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane facing the darkest time in his life. He struggles his will against the ultimate will of God. The flesh that does not want to die surrendering to the plan of God. It was dark in his mind as he struggled. And I, don't know, I don't know if you've ever had to pray for the will of God in your life, but sometimes it feels dark. You're trying to sort everything out. Amen. Trying to figure out which way to go and God, what do I need to do? What do I need to say? God, and that's where Jesus was. He's betrayed by a friend. He's mocked. He's beat. And finally, he's led to Calvary. He's nailed to a cross. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 45, it says, Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land into the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabathani. That is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And this morning I've come to preach to some people that feel a lot that same way. You feel like, God, where are you? Jesus. Is there any intercessors in the house? Would you begin to lift your voice right now all across this place? My God. My God. Where are you at? Why have you forsaken me? Job said, I've looked over here. Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, This man calleth for Elias or Elijah. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let me. Let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil in the temple was written, trained from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. The sky was literally black and dark. And there was confusion and chaos all around. What's happening? That's our Messiah. That's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This can't be happening to Jesus. Um, darkness and confusion. before. The veil and the temple was being rent and twain from top to the bottom. Opening up that holies of holies so that now not only the high priest could go in to where the presence of the Lord was 
but there was a path, a passageway opened up uh, so that each and every one of us could be filled uh, with the presence of God. Uh, not only is it represented by an ark of the covenant anymore, uh, but it now is able to live uh, on the inside of you and me. Uh, I want to tell you that even when it's dark, uh, God is moving. Uh, even when we don't understand it all, uh, God is working. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift our hands, lift our voices together all across the house. Come on, would you do that with me right now? God, I love you. God, I praise you. Come on, in the name of Jesus. 